Good morning, everyone. So this is the first part of a series that I'm going to be doing, and it's new. We're going to try something new. And um, I'm just going to film kind of as I work on this, like, I don't know, maybe six parts for this one. I have about 100 hours into it so far. As you can see, um, I have a lot more to go. So my guess is it'll take me anywhere from 600 to 700 hours, which for me means like four to six months. I'm really not sure. But um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get into it. So I just woke up and made some coffee. And um, this is kind of how I start my day is I'll just sit down and work on um, whatever piece I have going on. And it's pretty relaxing. And honestly, I can't really think of doing anything else first thing in the morning. So um, this is what I have so far. I really like how it's coming out. Um, sometimes these paintings are, some are easier than others. And when I say easier, I don't mean um, easier to paint necessarily, but like I know what I want or I know, um, I know, what it's going to look like or have a clear vision I guess so um this one for me has been a lot easier because I know what I want the sky to look like I know what I want all these buildings to look like so um that makes it easier in a sense so we're gonna go ahead and get into it um and yeah I hope you guys like this series uh this painting is huge it's four feet by three feet and that's really big for watercolor um so I'm just crossing my fingers and being really careful that I don't damage it in the process before um, I finish it because it's really fragile. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get into it. Okay, so as you can see, I am making my way up the building. Um, so my next part is going to be one of those kind of dark grid looking things. So we have like the dark and then the light windows and then the dark again. So my next part, I'm going to be working up here, and it's this, uh, like, dark-looking part. Um, so, yeah, it'll take me probably, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes to do one of those. Um, and that's kind of how this whole painting goes. It's just kind of slow like that. Um, this is Detroit. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Um, I grew up outside of Detroit, so that's another reason why this painting is um, has been so vibrant. It's because um, I know this city, like I understand it. And um, I think if anyone, if any artist is asked to paint their hometown or sing about their hometown or something, um, there's just a really deep understanding. And I think the art would probably come out better than a city that they otherwise don't know. So um, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to go over to our palette. Um, and we are going to mix, um, kind of some dark brown, like, uh, I guess it's just mm, kind of between like a black and brown, which I already kind of have on the palette. So, um, we'll just kind of pick it up, I guess. I always like when I have the paint already on the palette, it makes my job easier. Mm. And I'm always paying attention um, when I'm mixing blacks and browns and I mean any color, but um, I'm paying attention to the hue, like the hue of the actual color that I'm mixing. So like this brown right now, um, I guess in the art world, they would say, is it cooler or warmer? Um, meaning is it more blue or more brown? And I know, um, on this little section that we're doing, I want it to be um, warmer, but not too warm. So I'm just looking for like, um, almost like a taupe, like a dark taupe. So um, it's really subtle, but all of that makes a really big difference in the piece or whatever you're working on. You just have to get a little sheet of paper and set it down. Um, that's another huge thing, the <laughs> piece of paper. Um, my hand, like, if you have sweaty hands like I do, or like, I don't know, as you start to work on stuff, um, my hand sweats, and that would absolutely blur all of the watercolor that's already on the painting. So, um, I have to put a sheet of paper down before I start working over what I've already done, and then I just rest my hand on the piece of paper. 
But um, anyways, what I was saying is the browns and blacks or like the um, any hue of whatever color you're doing, like um, for example, on this building, there's um, technically this building is like white, but it's in shadow. So it's actually like a darker purple or like a medium purple shade. Um, all of that plays into your final piece. It's going to make all the difference in the world. I mean, I guess that's the art of painting, but um, it's important to kind of pay attention to uh, what color, like you have to really think about what color your brown is. It might be like a purple brown or a green brown, if that makes sense. And um, it's also the art of uh, color theory or the science of it, I guess, um, which I learned in art school. Um, I'm sure you could YouTube that very easily and um, kind of practice it. But um, it plays a huge role in your final piece, especially if you're doing something realistic like this um, or sort of realistic, then um, yeah, you just wanna pay attention. I would do that though if you haven't like you know if you haven't gone through formal training or anything just look it up on YouTube and um, look up color theory or whatever and um, I'm sure someone out there has done numerous videos on how to paint with color theory and yes I'm just going to fill in this little box it's so pleasing to kind of fill in shapes sometimes like like you're back in kindergarten. And this is why I do this first thing in the morning because it's kind of easy. Not easy, but like, I don't know, left or right brain or whatever. I don't know which is which, but that more abstract side is working right now. I can't think about emails or anything. And I just fill in this little box. So um, obviously there's like a texture on all of these. So this is kind of how I've been starting them. I just um, lay in like a flat color and then I'll go in with like a black. Um, so like a really deep black. And I'll have to mix that. Um, even though I have some on my palette, it's not, um, is it opaque? I, I don't know what the word is. Um, it has something to do with the word opaque, but it's not um, thick enough, I guess, the paint on the palette right now. So with watercolor, I guess with oil or anything else too, um, I always pay attention to how thick the paint is because obviously the more pigment you have, um, you're not gonna be able to see through it. So like, see how much deeper the black is right there than this? Um, this is going to give me like full coverage. You're not going to see through it. Whereas this is going to give me that more watery looking kind of look. So I need like a really deep black. Um, and then you'll see that's where all these blacks are. You have to make sure that, um, you have a really thick, thick paint. And I'm just going to lay that in. And then, um, uh, it looks like I missed a little something. Hmm, this will be a good learning thing. Okay, so, um, see that, see that little, like, ledge looking thing? I missed it up here. Um, not to worry, because I will add it in right now and show you guys how I do that. And, um, this is as close as you can get to erasing in watercolor. Um, so... I'm going to wash off my brush and um, this one's a little easier than another scenario might be but I'm going to uh, take away the paint from to like create that ledge looking thing and all I do is run my clean brush over like a line and it will pick up the paint 
and it will erase, not erase, but it will give me um, like that light strip, which is perfect for a ledge. And I added it in. Um, sometimes, like I said, sometimes that works better better than other times um because you obviously can't erase watercolor once the paint is on there it is on there so you have to be really careful and kind of be very sure about what you're doing um but something like that like it is possible to kind of go back and fix some things um anyways i've been forgetting a lot of the ledges so that's definitely not the first time that's happened with this piece um, and then right now I'm just adding some texture onto um, kind of the, I don't know what you would call these, but I'm adding texture. There was texture in the picture. I have reference photos for all this stuff, by the way. I, I went down there and took some photography. My dad drove me down there and I took some photography. And then um, I just kind of like, when I'm drawing my paintings, um, I'm fully designing them. So I'm using the photography just as like a reference, but um, this painting doesn't actually, like this scene doesn't actually exist. Uh, the two big buildings that are on the right are on different streets than the ones on the left. But um, it's like all of the Detroit teams and buildings. So it's like the football stadium, the baseball stadium, the hockey, the big theater we have. Um, so that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm just, um, I'm designing like this really big, like almost like city party looking scene, um, just to celebrate the whole city. And I'm bringing back some like historical references of like, um, obviously the auto industry was really big. So we're going to have some really fun, cool car models, um, that are kind of historical and, yeah, it's just going to kind of celebrate the whole city, and um, I'm so excited to finish this. I just hope that I don't damage this painting before um, that day comes, but uh, thoughts and prayers for me, please. Awesome. Okay, so that little piece is done. Um, I guess I have one more ledge, so we'll pop in that ledge above it. There's the ledge. Cool. So that's about how it's all looking. You know, I guess it could use a little more texture. I'll go back in later and mess with it. But um, yeah, so I'm just doing that, you know, over this whole building. Um, so we'll go on to the next one. And um, I might time lapse this uh, just so you guys don't have to watch it. Oops. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put you guys on like a time lapse and then um, I'll see you in a bit when we are doing the really beautiful, fun windows. Okay, so that's the top row. That's what we just did. And um, it doesn't look too different from when we started because the whole building is a pattern and we're just working our way up. But that's where I am so far. Um, and I think the next video, um, I'll keep working my way up the building and then the next one maybe we'll do um, one of those like colorful windows. Um, those are really fun and it's kind of cool because I have to put the sky reflection in those windows way before I'm going to do the sky. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys like this series. 
Um, I'm going to try and film this one kind of the whole time that I'm working on it. If you want to follow me on Instagram, that's kind of where I post, um, like, not daily, but a few times a week, um, updating, you know, what I worked on that day or um, just like fun pictures of the progress or whatever. So if you wanna keep up with the painting in real time, um, follow me there. But thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.